All right, Baxter, what was the uh, thing that encouraged you the most as you prepared this sermon? Yeah, um, I was very encouraged just by a deeper dive at the text. I've never preached for Samuel 17 before, and I don't remember hearing a David and Goliath sermon ever before, but it's such a familiar text for me. So, um, yeah, just, just specifically how the three characters reject David and God still saying, you know what, he's, even though he's rejecting my means of salvation, I'm going to bring victory. And how that's seen ultimately in Christ um, was the most encouraging to me. Okay. Uh, let's start in the middle of the room. Sinan? Yeah, I, I feel there are a number of points of encouragement, but the 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 weakness in strength in, under the second point um, was a particular encouragement in the context of ministry. So God using what is weak to shine that is strong. So I could hear Corinthians coming out there. That was a that was a great encouragement. Okay, Wanda. Uh, I liked your one of your applications in your third point, like in our preaching, it's not your word, it's not your battle, it's the Lord. So that call to trust in the Lord in our preaching, I think that was just really helpful and a good reminder for me. Okay. Jeremy? Uh, yeah, I was with sin in that point, in your, that applicationary point, your first um, section was really powerful. Strength and weakness and leaning into God and that weakness and fear as opposed to trying to correct it yourself without him. Um, I thought that was really, that, well, that, and I thought that was very um, encouraging and bolstering for me. Okay. Do you? I think just as Harmon said, <clears throat> allowing our weakness to project our faith, the trust in the Lord. All right. Ed? Oh, and everybody else, I like that piece about how our inadequacies should constantly remind us to put our trust in him. I was just encouraged about the whole tone of the thing, just very encouraged, but those, particularly those applications were very helpful. Yeah. Uh, the most encouraging part to me, uh, to pick a different one, is this idea that uh, faithful deliverance in the past should give us confidence for faithful deliverance in the future. Just the way that you talked about that, I thought was particularly helpful and encouraging. Uh, what do you think you just missed maybe you tried maybe you just completely forgot but didn't make it yeah um there were so this was a challenge for me just the length of the text so right. as you guys know heard i mean the very end i just briefly talked about the end of the text and i did feel that the first point just took a lot to get into even before any application I, I felt like maybe I put too much pressure on myself to give too much context right up front or to explain too much of the story. And, um, and so that was something I feel like I can improve on, just balancing explaining versus preaching. Right. Sin? So I agree with that, um, and thank you for that. So just under that first point, um, so people accept the Lord's victory. Sorry, I'm reading the third one. People forget the Lord. Is that right? Yeah. The people, the people forget accept the, the victory of the Lord. So the first one is the people forget the Lord's victory. The, pe the people forget the Lord. The Lord, okay. So you then applied it to fear at the end of the, the point. And I thought, just wielding it back to your forgetting. So the, the fear... You left it in the fear aspect, mm -hmm. which wasn't quite your point. Right. So just thinking about, it's a minor thing, thinking about, I thought the fear point was great, but just bringing it back to it what you, tied back yeah, into the, forgetting. the forgetting the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That helped you strengthen that, yeah. Fun. Um, in, a, in a passage like this that, that was really kind of dense, I feel like you had a lot of really good application, but I wonder if it would have been better to have fewer points that you went deeper on rather than like a lot of kind of, you know, like shorter little application points. 
Um, okay. Yeah, I appreciated the application you had, but I wonder if it would have just been helpful mm. to have fewer yeah. that dove deeper. Yeah, Kevin. Uh, I didn't think you needed to go to the Hebrew to show that he was a representative. <laughs> Uh, especially because then that was your very next thing that you did was look he's the guy that's going out and if they kill right. him so yeah yep Jeremy um yeah I've only got really small ones because I thought it was really good uh I guess uh so yeah the introduction I'm not a sport dude um I don't sport well that's why I'm a large. Ah. <laughs> uh, that's why I act, um, which that has nothing to do with. Well, does have to do. Uh, so the sideline point. I think you twisted it well, but maybe could have used a little more explanation because I was like, well, that dude on the sidelines. Who cares about him? He didn't do anything. So he sucks to. I don't like him. So, but then you kind of use that to say uh, that's kind of where they, or I, now I can't remember how you used that. I could be talking on my butt now, um, but it just seemed like that sideline character, which I do a lot in this class. Um, I wasn't quite sure if it, it was a good image, but I'm not quite sure if it pushed you far enough. I'm thinking in my head right now, it's, I'm saying that you used that to say God was put on the sidelines or how did you use that? Sorry. Uh, ultimately to show how the people, yeah, you're, it's a fair point because I wielded it in different ways. So it was probably, it wasn't consistent because okay. um, I had language saying God was on the sideline. I had language explaining that the um, the people were on the sideline and were still given victory, so that's probably what caused the confusion because it wasn't used in a consistent way. Yeah. So that's that's good feedback, Jeremy. Yeah. Part of it's just me, but yeah, it's just that it's got on the yeah. sideline or not. Yeah. Stephen, um, I enjoyed it, but this is about um, one thing to critique here, though. But, um, I would say. Well, it was a long passage, and there was a lot of content. Mm -hmm. I still needed maybe a little bit more repetition with some things so that they mm. could, could sink yeah. and stay, yeah. stay with mm -hmm. me, because yeah. you gave a lot of content. Okay. Ed? So I think that um, particularly in the first point, that I, th I think overall, uh, number one, when you preach this again, I know you'll, I mean, I, I think you got the bones for a great sermon, but it felt mm -hmm. kind of like a fire hydrant um, at times because I think you needed to edit some things down, but everything you said was good, so it makes it hard, but mm -hmm. it was at times too much. I thought the argument was good as it relates to, you know, our victory is by his work, but especially in the first part, but even throughout the rest of it, it's like there was some good stuff that you could have cut out so that you could have kept the best stuff mm -hmm. and your punch would have been even more effective. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't have uh, any specific examples because I got a whole lot of notes of just good stuff, mm -hmm. but it this stage, I think, in the development of this sermon, is really about cutting out as much good stuff so you can leave the best, not just for the sake of time, but more so for the sake of clarity. Right, yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, I would say that, uh, so there's this, it sounded like in the first point you were talking about how like they just needed to rely on God because nobody could defeat, defeat Goliath which seemed to clash rather heavily with your second point, which was David is God's means of defeating Goliath. And so you spoke mm -hmm. so heavily about no one yeah. that the moment you start talking about David, you're like, well, hold on, I thought you said no one. Right. Instead of like God through, and I know what you were trying to say, yeah. but in the way that you presented it, it was very like unclear, like, well, then what's David trying to do? Right, yep. Sit in. One other minor thing, uh, like I said, which just picking you. So I think I missed the, the launch into one and then the launch into moving from two to three in terms of your transitioning. I, I could have been writing and you could have said it or it could 
be on you. In which case, <laughs> if it is on yeah, you, those are the two options. For sure. Yeah, no, it's helpful. I'm trying just, to just I'm trying clear to work ways on, of. Yeah, transitions. Yeah. I think two to three yeah. definitely could have been clear. And then one, I tried to, I actually tried to like make a nice transition, but it could have been too wordy that you actually got lost in yeah, my I think I transition got lost in the statement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's helpful. Put in mind. It's any consolation. I thought you were really clear. But uh, that's not where we're at right now. We're on <laughs> um, that one's just for free. Bonus, <laughs> bonus plus point. Uh, so this is this is a minor thing, but pretty m maybe one hundred percent of your illustrations all were sports illustrations, mm -hmm. and it's tough because it's like, I mean, you know, it's Texas. like this battle scene, like you know, sports ones just fit. But I think to Jeremy's point, like yeah, you know, you heavy. just remember like. Not everybody is a sports person, so try to maybe mix up how you're illustrating. Yep. Kevin, um, as you were moving it forward, there was a lot of ambiguity as to who the new enemy is right. that we're fighting, with the exception of maybe at the very end talking about like he took our transgressions or death, but that was like really to the last few minutes. So yeah. That could be maybe helpful. Clearly lining that up earlier. Yeah, right. Okay. Jeremy? Oh, mine have been said. Okay. Or Steven? Mine have been said too. Okay. Ed? Um, the only other minor thing I would add is in the, in the center section, or number two, where you were talking about rejecting the Lord's means. But then you looked at the three different conversations and ultimately talked about how David was rejected by all three. There was something, there was something in the, something was not connecting well with me in terms of the, the statement of the, the title of that section, Reject mm -hmm. the Lord's Means, and then actually what you were talking about, particularly I think he could have sort of pared down all the stuff about Eliab and the, you know, the uh, family dynamic. Yeah. But bottom line, I never did get really back to um, necessarily rejection of the Lord's means, particularly in terms of what that meant for Goliath. Because Goliath, I don't know that he was so much rejecting as he was cussing. But <laughs> right. I just couldn't think that. Yeah. Couldn't really get the connection that relates to the title. I understood the conversations, right? But I guess the title kind of blew me off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so my last one will hopefully be beneficial for everybody. It's general, and then I'll give you specifics. Uh, get your facts straight, and if you're going to mention something, make sure you prove it. So, for example, the people are servants of Saul. So you taking that to say they've forgotten God, maybe they have forgotten God, mm -hmm. that's not the place to show it. They are the servants of Saul. Or for example, David might be right in what he says to his brother, but it isn't clear that his brother lashes out because he doesn't believe. Um, the main one, though, is like Saul does not end up rejecting David. He ends up saying, all right, then go for it. Lord be with you. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't have sent him because he knows what the stakes are. He knows that whoever goes and faces Goliath is going to, this, the whole battle rides on this. Mm -hmm. And he lets him go. He doesn't say, no, so you stick behind. Um, and then, I mean, I think the last one is just, David's not weak and small at all. I mean, I don't know how many lions you grabbed by the mane and punched in the face. Yeah, very few, yeah. Yeah. So it's not so much that he is weak and small, but that he's using an unconventional means to defeat. Yeah. Yeah. So everything you said about the connection between him and yeah. Jesus, how Jesus is great, still works. Because Jesus wasn't weak and small either. Right. You know, son of God. But the means by which he did it was. So it's really the means, it's not exactly the yeah. person. So if you downplay David as a person, weak then it, it ends up like, mm -hmm. well, then you go with like this Jesus meek and mild thing. But you're actually 
taking away from the fact that it's divinity and human flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're going to argue for things, just make sure that it's really specific and the text isn't particularly true. We wrestled with this a lot last year, the guys who were here. We're like making moral judgments and stuff on the basis yeah. of like such as silence of the text. So certain things like... It's um, so inviting. Right, it is so inviting. <laughs> but at one point you said like, uh, you know, uh, the Lord's been... His, David's confidence was in the Lord. Well, the text was saying that. So you highlighted it and that part was great. If you're going to highlight something, make sure that it's like in there. You've got a good argument for it from in yeah. there. So the argument for them forgetting the Lord was just their fear, you would say, or like 40 days of, I mean, their, their behavior. Sure. So you're, the, the thing you mentioned from like Deuteronomy or whatever, that was good. Yeah, that was it cool. also could have gone the other way, I thought, though. Right. It could have been that their forgetting of the Lord was the reason they were fearful. You could have mm -hmm. maybe even turned it both ways. Right. But yeah. Right. There, yeah, just kind of reading too much into. Yeah. They're definitely like for the servants of salt they were right and the same thing at the end like we we're like that ah, do they really get it well they they're celebrating david right so you know right it doesn't say that they didn't right yes right yeah let's be careful with those things in general in there yeah, that's helpful thank you what do you think you did well um uh, have you tried to do however small and thought oh well I, I try I tried with the gospel connection. I tried to um, yeah. I felt like you can't do David and Goliath and not try to do a right. stronger gospel connection. You can't just go to one right. text. So I tried to balance going to multiple texts and right. alluding to text or even yeah. just saying a text but not saying and as right. it says here, in order to just pack it all together. Yeah. Um so I yeah, okay. I felt like I tried that. And it, you probably didn't see it, but you had Ed raising his hands back there. <laughs> we all saw it. <laughs> Send it. Oh, y'all can see me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, I thought, I thought that was really a strong point, man. You not only connected to the gospel, which we tried to, but wielded it for application to urge the, the ongoing trusting in the Lord. For his battle, so I thought that was, and then you, you warned us, uh, off the back of your gospel connection. So mm. that warning landed with power because you'd so set up, you'd taken the gospel right, right to the end, uh, Revelation five. So that was really helpful. Man. So I, uh, I thought your intro was good. Um, obviously, you know. People gave you some feedback on it, but what I liked about it was that it was quick. It was like the perfect length. You came in, gave us this illustration that I think, you know, we were able to kind of see like where you were going with it. And then you got to your points, your main point, your sub points, and then you were into the text. And with the 58 verses, like it was the perfect length. So that was well done. Yeah. yeah. Kevin? I'm much more excited about my corrections <laughs> than I'm being encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm going to start using that. I, uh, I actually appreciated your, the way you twisted sidelines a bunch of different ways and like God was on the sidelines and they were on the sidelines and you shouldn't put Jesus on the sideline. Um, so while it may have been confusing for like the non-sports guy, like I'm a sports guy, so I really liked it. <laughs> Landed with the sports guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Jeremy? Uh, yeah, I will go on the converse of Bond, one of Bonin's points. I liked all the slew of kind of small applications here or there. Because um, while I am not a sports guy, I did still get a lot of them. Just so we're, just so we're clear. That we're just <laughs> um, no, but uh, realistically, I did really like him because I, I think because it is such that you had so much text and you were helping us through it, right? You weren't just leaving us to be like, what's what? You know, you were like, here, we're walking. It kind of helped to give those moments of like pause and relief of like, mm -hmm. this is a heavy biblical text and a lot of verses, right? And so I think, I think while, while you do have maybe be careful sometimes, I think in this it was a perfect use of small applications here or there and then bigger ones when you kind of got to the end of your points. So I, I really liked them. I thought they were helpful. Thanks, Jay. Steven? I like how you, you kept, kept us, kept me engaged, even though it was a 
a lot of material, a lot of text, but yet you kept my attention and it's like you drew me to that conflict and the climax, you know. And so you, um, your emotions radiated all of that in your language. So mm. you kept me in there. Thanks, sir. Ed? So your argument, your victory is by his work was just crystal clear, uh, organic from the text. You you kept circling back around to it, and it just uh, was satisfying in the sense that you said that's what your argument was going to be, and then ultimately that's what your argument was. So by the time we got to the end, uh, particularly with your gospel connection runs, I felt very satisfied, uh, not only in, that you did what you promised you were going to do with your argument, but your but your argument was strengthening to me. Um, it wasn't just theoretical; it was actually you, you applied it really well, so that I came away strengthened and not just informed. Okay, good. Yeah, I think that you uh, did a good job at preaching this text as if it were a narrative, right? So, uh, and without getting like lost in the story, which is somebody like my temptation or preaching like an epistle right it was just kind of nice mm -hmm. weaving out where you're clearly preaching from this narrative but in a way that tracked with the narrative that I thought worked pretty well thanks yeah that, another way I, I would put that is your speed through the points was so it's like you, you practiced it a lot of times and you are moving through the story um, and I found the, the moments when you did slow down it was to bring light by one word, a word picture or a line of illustration. So I thought that was, I was like, wow, okay, I'm tracking. I mean, I, you know, you know, you've studied your text and we're moving, we're going somewhere here and we're heading to that gospel connection. So that was great, man. Thanks. Felt like you wielded the Bible in two helpful ways. First of all, your context work I thought was solid, um, not just in Samuel, but like you went back to Deuteronomy and then when you pushed forward in your gospel. But then I also felt like there were, you know, maybe two or three times where you read a short excerpt from the text and I thought each time it was intentional and helpful to hear whatever it was that you read so it wasn't like wasted words. Um, so yeah, I thought that was well done. Thanks. Uh, one of the things I thought was good and was also the most encouraging for me was actually your move to what that future victory is mm -hmm. and your passion on it, moving to 1 Corinthians 15 and then ultimately uh, Revelation 5 uh, and yeah, the conviction with which you're stating that there is victory, especially even the victory word showing up in the 1 Corinthians 15, mm -hmm. just really like tied to not um, so I thought that was great Thanks, Kevin yeah, I'll double up on uh, sin ends, I thought, because it's something I still struggle with, too. And from the last time I heard you to this time, your speed was a, it was good. You had you slowed down at good moments. You had it con under control, and when you hit that speed train, it was in the gospel where you were getting excited and elevating us all. And so I thought you, that just, it was a huge, huge improvement from mm. um, the first time I saw you, which Thanks, man. I'm sure you worked a lot on. So. Yeah. I like the... Um, Gospel connection for sure. I just drove that home, mm -hmm. and also um, just a lot of the applications that you was making throughout the sermon. Ed, so though the uh, shape of the sermon in terms of the time allotted to the different uh, your different points can be adjusted, the trajectory of the sermon I thought. Uh, perfectly matched the trajectory of the text. You, you tracked you tracked well with the terrain of the text, and you you landed you landed real well. I felt that uh, the overarching sort of just um, feel of the sermon in terms of the movement piece was, was really was really well done and very satisfying. Not, again, not just oratorically, but uh, spiritually speaking, just. Very encouraging the way the way the punch landed. It landed squarely, mm. so I appreciated that. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, most might have been said. So I'll just say in closing that like you had a lot of good lines in there mm. that were uh, not just like catchy or witty, but actually helped do your thing. 
So that whole kind of idea that God chooses to work with his hands behind his back and, um, you know, that that sidelines thing that Kevin pointed out. And then just constantly this thing of this victory in the past, this guarantee of victory in the future. But just you spoke about it well. You didn't just, like, mumble along about it. And it felt like it was a very kind of cohesive run that was uh, moving. It didn't just, like, stack text on top of text on top of text. Mm -hmm. I thought it was helpful. Thanks. All right. Right on. Thanks, gentlemen. There we go. Thank you very much.